child of fairest mother, God the Lord who came to earth, Word made flesh, our very brother, takes our nature by his birth. Sing of Jesus, Son of Mary, in the Welcome to Monday of the 21st week of Ordinary Time. Today is also the Feast of the Queenship of Mary. Remember, last Monday was the Feast of the Assumption. So this is the eighth day after the Feast of the Assumption. This is the Queenship of Mary. This is in the octave of the great Feast of the Assumption. So here it is. And so we, we celebrate this Queenship. Now, Mary not only is soon into heaven... But Mary had a role in heaven. She has a place in heaven, as I was talking about on the Feast of the Assumption. She helps us to remember, to make present the very life of Jesus in our lives. So uh, that's what we celebrate here today. I remember uh, one person who I have great respect for about Mary and theology says, Mary is more mother and queen. More, she's more mother than queen, but she is also queen. Well, uh, so she is a a ruling place in our lives. We pay attention to what she's saying, especially as she reminds us about her son. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We celebrate, we, we celebrate this queenship of Mary. We, we pray now through her intercession. And Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. You're Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are Word made flesh, splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who made the mother of your Son to be our mother and our queen, graciously grant that, sustained by her intercession, we may attain into the heavenly kingdom the glory promised to your children. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We ought to thank God always for you, brothers and sisters, as is fitting, because your faith flourishes evermore and the love of every one of you for one another grows ever greater. Accordingly, we ourselves boast of you in the churches of God regarding your endurance and faith in all your persecutions and the afflictions you endure. This is evidence of the just judgment of God so that you may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. We always pray for you, that our God may make you worth of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment 
every good purpose and every effort of faith, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him in accord with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of the Lord. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Highly to be praised, awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught, but the Lord made the heavens. With you, a reading for the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You lock the kingdom of heaven before men. You do not enter yourselves, nor do you allow entrance to those trying to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You transverse sea and land to make one convert. And, and when that happens, you make him a child of Gehenna twice as much as yourselves. Woe to you blind guides who say, if one swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gold in the temple, one is obliged. Blind fools, which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred. And you say, if one swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if one swears by the gift of the altar, one is obliged. You blind ones, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred. One who swears by the altar swears by it, and all that's all upon it. One who swears by a temple swears by it, and by him who dwells in it. One who swears by heaven swears by the throne of God, and by him who is seated on it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, for the next two days, folks, you and I are going to be reading from the seven woes of Jesus. Now, this is as severe as Jesus gets. And this goes to show you, he's no marshmallow. You know, he's someone who uh, is, is also a very demanding figure. And most especially as you listen, he never, ever talks like this to the people. He talks like this to the leadership 
and it's for a very, very important reason. Now, first of all, let me talk to you about in Scripture, there are these three different kinds of woes. The first kind is one, there's this outburst of, of emotion when some tragedy occurs. You and I watch tragedies on our television all the time uh, because a uh, 24-hour news cycle and some tra some violence, some shooting occurs, and, and you see people just with this outburst of emotion, and it's kind of like that. It's a, um, a, a woe. The second kind of woe is attention grabber. The prophets did this a lot. Jeremiah did it a lot. Isaiah did it. Like, he, like they're trying to say, wake up, wake up, wake up. Pay attention, pay attention. It's the second kind of woe. Then there's a third kind of woe. And this is the declaration of doom of someone in grave danger of God's judgment. The prophets did this a lot. A declaration of what? A declaration of doom. You are in big, big trouble here the way you're choosing to live your life. And this is the kind of woe this is. Jesus is talking about this third kind of woe here in all this. And his chief complaint, his chief woe, is first of all, they're completely, totally uninterested in everything he's saying to them and everything he's doing. Here is, here is God with skin on, and they're completely, totally uninterested. And not only that, and you kind of heard it in the scriptures here, not only that, they uninterested, they're, they want to keep everybody else out too. They want to keep everybody else out in a way too. So it's not only that they're missing the point, they're, 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 they're hell-bent on not letting anybody else get it either. They work against Jesus as opposed to for him, and they're the leaders. They're the leadership in all of this. But rather than go through all these seven woes one at a time, and, and at this point, I don't know exactly what I'm going to say tomorrow in all this, what I want to do is I want to do a little examine. I, I, you and I do a little examination of our conscience. Kevin's going to put these things up on the screen. A little examination of conscience ourselves based on these seven woes. And what is most alarming about the Pharisees was their total unawareness of their dire situation. And could I even say that might be a way to explain the situation of our church today? We're kind of a cocky bunch. I don't know why we get off being that. But we're suddenly just missing the point of the dire situation that we're in. And so maybe in many ways, these woes do apply to us. So here's my, and no question, by the way, today. I want to go through this examine kind of slowly here with you. And as we go through this exam, that will be our questions that we need to ponder here for, day, for today as well. Here we go. Number one, well, number one, do I practice what I preach? Wow. Number two, do I help others live by God's way or do I lead them away from God's standards? God's way of life. Well, number two. Number three. Do I perform religious actions to impress others or just to get God's approval? Do I miss the point of my religious actions as somehow needing to be something that comes from the inside as opposed to just the outside? Number four, do I desire honors and position that will be tomorrow? Number five, do I welcome others? Do I welcome others or do I by my actions show that others different from me are simply not welcome. Number six, do I evade more responsibilities by legal excuses? I make legal excuses for why I don't have to do what I'm really supposed to do. Number seven, do I emphasize lesser matters and neglect justice, mercy, and faithfulness? And number eight, my last one, in my spiritual journey, do I seek to cleanse my inner self or do I focus only on the externals? That's a big one for us. It's one of the big woes that Jesus had for all of us. So there we have it, folks, uh, on this feast day of the Queenship of Mary. There is my beginning. I'll talk more about the woes, I'm sure, tomorrow. But uh, And by the way, I wanted to share this with you, if I may. Uh, something Ed Sri writes about uh, the uh, today, especially he writes, "Woe one and woe two, condemn the scribes and Pharisees for being hypocrites who block the way to the kingdom. Not not only do they enter themselves, but they also, by their influence, dissuade others from trying to enter." 
God bless you, folks. Let's examine ourselves. It's one of those days we've got to take a good hard look at ourselves, and let's not be afraid to be honest about that, too. So God bless you. Looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Bye-bye now.